chapter 2 is the story of uh, Pentecost. When the disciples were locked behind uh, closed doors, it uh, was Pentecost is 50 days, 50 days after Easter. And uh, they were still, seven weeks later, they were still locked behind closed doors. And then the sound like a rushing wind came on, and then clothes as of fire appeared onto their heads, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spilled out into the street. And because people from all over were gathered into Jerusalem, they were speaking different languages. And these disciples, who didn't have a grade eight education, if any education at all, they spilled out into the streets and began speaking in a language that they had never spoken before. And this is the story of the beginning of the Christian church. There's uh, two schools of thought here. Um, did the disciples suddenly receive this gift from the Holy Spirit and it changed them? Or did they have all of these wonderful gifts given to them by God and they were locked inside? And on this day, they were opened up and they spilled out into the streets with these gifts. I'm going to preach about the second of those two because I think this is a really important uh, understanding that we have. Rather than believing that God has to give us these gifts, God has to do this for us, God has to make this happen, it's a more powerful thing to believe that these gifts are already inside of us. And they've been locked away for most of our lives. You can see uh, what happens with, uh, with children. And it even happened, I remember, with, uh, with Whitney. Uh, we'd be walking around, uh, when she was two years old, we'd be walking around our street. And every person she saw, even in the malls, she'd say hi to. And then, uh, you know what we did? We told her you shouldn't talk to strangers. And she didn't. And that uh, changed her. But this is what we do, isn't it, as parents? We instill a fear in our children in order to protect them, in order to make it a safer world. But that's what we do maybe even in our school systems and uh, in our families and in our communities and in our churches. We begin to instill a fear in people and those gifts that God has given us remain locked up inside. 
Um, I uh, used to preach, I used to write out for the first 25 years of my ministry, I'm in my 45th year now, I wrote out all my sermons by hand. And then I read the sermons. And one, and a couple of years ago, I threw them away, not thinking I could probably auction them off on the internet and make millions of dollars. Did any of you want to buy them before? I, they're gone, okay? But before I threw them away, I went back and looked what my preaching was like 40 some years ago. And the reason I wrote the words out is because I was afraid. It's very fearful to stand in. Anybody else want to stand here in front of everybody and share your thoughts and feelings and the word of God? It's very threatening. It's very scary. And I read my words very carefully and I didn't stray from the text because I was preaching from a place of fear. And it was maybe 15, 20 years ago that I began to just, just preach. Just preach from my heart and less fear. The other day I was in the uh, building here and uh, this week I've been entertaining thoughts uh, about retirement more than I ever had before. And I thought, uh, I thought, you know what? You still have that fear. 45 years later, you're still preaching from a place of fear. Maybe not as fearful as you used to be, but still from a place of fear. When are you not going to do that anymore? When are you going to have those gifts spill out into the streets and help to change people's lives? It's funny how things that you learned as a child, how to be fearful. And now I'm 71, and you still have that fear in your hearts. And I believe for most people, the gifts the powerful gifts that God has given to us remain locked inside because we're afraid of what other people are going to think. We're afraid of doing something outside of the norm, doing something different, being... One of the reasons I came to Canada, okay, was not because Saskatchewan greatly appealed to me. <laughs> it does now, but it didn't then. was to get away from my family and the preconceived ideas they had for me and from the people that I knew in the church. It's time. It's time for us to let go of that fear, the fear that has been instilled in us. Don't be different. Conform. Do the things that, you've, that people have always done. Think the way that we've always thought and stay in this box that we have created for you. I have great fears about the future of the church. And, uh, and then, then I realized, you know what? That goes against what my strong belief is. And even though there are fears and uh, a belief that things are not going to be the way they used to be, maybe if enough people have the courage to speak what's in their heart and to use the gifts that God has given to them, maybe the church will grow again like it did 2,000 years ago. Maybe people will be in awe and realize this is powerful. This is the message from God. This is what can help to change our lives. I have a great fear for the community of Canada and for the world and where we're heading and how we seem to be so against one another and afraid of one another. Maybe if more people stepped up and used the gifts to create a new community in our world and in Canada, maybe the world in Canada would be able to change. If the leaders of the world, if people who aspire to leading in government are afraid, afraid of being kicked out of office, afraid of speaking their minds and doing what they believe is right, then Canada is going to continue to do what they've been doing the last number of years. My belief is that God creates such an awesome and amazing person in you. A person with the ability to change your life, to change the lives of the people around you, and to change the community that you live in. And it's mostly fear. 
And it's mostly not believing that you have these abilities that prevent you from using them. A number of years, for a number of years in confirmation, I made the kids stand in front of the mirror and say I'm awesome and amazing 10 times without laughing or out, without looking away. And some of the kids would say, I can't do it. I can't do it. You're awesome and amazing. I say, if you knew me, you would not say those words. Breaks my heart whenever I hear that. But something has happened to those wonderful, powerful gifts that God has given to us. And it's time for those gifts to explode out into our world, into our families, and into our communities. This is how we change the world. Amen.
serve the Lord. Thank you, God.